to Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we take a midweek break from our regular gaming coverage and talk about everything else going on in the world of penguins. And we try to be just slightly less cussy about it. I'm Ben Stone, joined every week uh, by Pedro Mateus. What's up, man? Hello! Well, I uh, just got off of an interview with... Uh... Two Indian guys and Paul from That's Connecticut. Right. Okay. It was amazing. <laughs> um, you, you, you had some good things to say about Paul, so... Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. Thumbs up if you're listening, Paul. But uh, you just want to get into it like we always do? Yep. Let's get on with it. So, XFC 414, or the road to XFC 414. <laughs> right. It's yeah, a you, common... You want to get that right. <laughs> the road to <laughs> it. <laughs> Available uh, fall 2037. Um... No, t tell me about it. Conservative man. estimate. Right. Uh, no, this is uh, the new, some of the new features which will be coming to XFC4. Uh, they say that this, uh, the 14, uh, 4.14 version, will be the upgrade to GTX, uh, GTK 3X compatibility, as it were. Right um, all of the other features that uh, come with GTK 3 will only be introduced, like the big features will only be introduced in 416 so we have that to look forward to whatever that may be no one knows yeah and then, then uh, i don't know we were talking around in uh, shot rail earlier and it's like maybe, maybe it should be a five point not release it's like ha, ha, ha. <laughs> i put a smile on my face put me in a better mood when i read that um they're also talking about they're going to be reworking um the xfce uh audio plugin mm -hmm. which is just don't waste the time. Doesn't... I mean, the only thing you should have installed, it doesn't matter if you're running XFCE or if you're insane and you're running something like, what's that thing, Unity? Or like, <laughs> ugh, just install PAVU control. Be done yeah. with it. Learn that your life will be 1000% better. Guaranteed. <laughs> They but, have some graphical improvements with uh, XFWM4 now supporting GLX compositing. What? Hey, welcome oh, to 2002 man. XFC. Cutting edge. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, along with Dry3 for the uh, driver support and Lib Epoxy, which is basically SDL for handling your mouse cursor in a GLX context. So good on them. Yeah, uh, I mean, it, yeah. it looks... Uh... It looks very XFC like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, and not that that's necessarily a bad thing, but um, so uh, someone has angered the stall man. Yes, and it was canonical. Oh no. He's going <laughs> to yes, throw his beard canonical, at them. Yeah. Uh, canonical said that um, uh, they wanted uh, Ubuntu to include ZFS from the get go, as it were. Without any user interaction, if they wanted to use ZFS, they would be able to use it. And Stallman's, those licenses are not compatible because um, ZFS was released under, under the CDDL 1.0 and Ubuntu is basically GPL 2 plus compliant. And since Oracle isn't likely to change ZFS to be GPL 2 plus compliant, because, you know, money... Uh, chances are Stallman's still going to have an issue with the way Canonical is doing this at this moment anyway. Well, then again, I mean, you know, even if they did that, like, you need to call it GNU ZFS. <laughs> GNU plus ZFS. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's a lot to say about nothing because, uh, even after reading through this particular article, it, my takeaway is like, Okay, I'm sorry you're upset, Mr. Stallman, but what you gonna do about it, bro? I, mean, uh, I don't know. Does the Free Software Foundation have the kind of money to take Canonical to court? Would, would they even want to? I mean, listen, I, I wouldn't mind seeing Canonical, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Shook up a little bit because they're not the best uh, players in our ecosystem of the Linux, so... Hmm. Yeah. I, I mean, know. it remains to be seen how this is going to unfold, but hey, Facebook. <laughs> Strange times had by all when Facebook unveils Surround 360 open source VR camera. Okay. Um, yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, it's a camera that's 360, and it's open source. So up next, uh, let's talk about the two <laughs> Googlers who created an API to connect USB devices and why this is a horribly bad idea and will probably kill your children, Pedro. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know if it'll kill your your children, but uh, if the quote-unquote fappening that happened a while back is any indication of anything, is that you shouldn't be trusting USB connected devices to the open web, as it were. So yeah, this is basically something that allows you to, say, plug in a webcam, a mouse, a keyboard, anything that's USB powered, you plug it into a server, and you can access it from anywhere in the world. In theory. It's, well, I mean, the only extra- negative thing I guess you could say about this, I mean, they, they've thought, I mean, you know, fellow Googs people, so, mm-hmm. but, you know, like, yeah, we, trust me, you know, we're working on the security bits, and you know, one of the things um, uh, Strider had to comment on, he's like, I'm having a hard time figuring out a real-world use-case scenario, and I was like, yeah, I can think of a couple, all right? Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the one you suggested in the show notes, which you'll be able to see <laughs> on the Patreon page, yes. Uh, <laughs> that's a, definitely a very good one, but yeah, I can see the use of it like, say, helping a relative debug a an Android device, or even an iOS device for that matter. You just remote into their box, install web USB, get them to plug in the stuff to the computer, and you can work on it from there. It makes sense to a degree. How much sense? Well, that sort of really relies on the whole security aspect of it, because how secure... Again, the fappening happened because iCloud got hacked. Well, I mean, this is nothing like that, man. I mean, I know that makes sense in your brain. I mean, this is all going to be browser-based, too. I mean, this is not going to be operating system level. This is going to be something that's going to be portable on all the devices. And the only thing I just want to say in closing is, like, what? Uh, I mean, is this technology alone from the NSA? I mean, see, that that's why I'm not worried about it. It's, it's something like this exists, Brad. It is Google. So, chances are probably, yeah. <laughs> well, let's, on a lighter note, um, let's talk about the Skype for Linux. Is like, no, see, I'm not going to say a bad word. Almost got me. Um, <laughs> many features are missing, and the features it has don't... All right, English, son. Seriously, this is PC World. And the features it has <laughs> don't work real... All right, I guess. All right, I'll give you a pass on that. That's just not well written. Um, we We know a little bit about this, don't we? A little bit, yeah. It's not like we use Skype for LWDWs and LGC weeklies on a weekly basis or anything. I don't know. Um, you know, the, the entire article just basically goes into is like Skype has not been updated on Linux in roughly four years, and ish, ish give or take. Actually, take no, give, give more, <laughs> give. And um, here, here's really what you got to think about, because my whole theory is. You know, Skype for Linux was not Raptor boss proof because when Skype by, bought by um, Microsoft, Microsoft, I'm pretty sure the guy who made the Linux client went, I'm out. And that was all to be heard. Yeah. In fact, the only major update that we've had to Skype, and that was like, what, two years ago, is they updated it to what would no longer do 16 by 9 widescreen video. <laughs> that was the only thing they updated. Oh, and I guess they introduced that... Uh crappy little overlay that shows up on the top right corner of your primary monitor when you don't have the window in focus so Mm -hmm. yeah i guess they introduced that but yeah the guy from pc world actually says that maybe skype for web will be the future (laughs) i've wait wait wait, wait. you you mean after they stop using their proprietary technology and use something like i don't know like we're using now called webrtc and catch up with the rest of the world (laughs) That's the thing. If you ever, if you ever get the chance, go on over to web.skype.com, I think it is, <laughs> and just have a look at the nope that 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 the entire website encompasses because it's really, really lacking. Even compared to the Linux version, it doesn't work, Brad. It just doesn't work. Yeah, I mean, it, it's definitely pretty rough, but I mean, that's something we have in common with Windows users because the uh, all Windows users will say, well, at least yours kind of works um, because there's <laughs> Skype on Windows is no love story either. But since we're on this PC world bandwagon, 
Let's talk about a thought experiment. Can you use the classic RM RF forward slash to nope your Windows box using the bash shell? Maybe? Nope. Uh, in the same way that if you use that command under Linux, it will preserve the root tree. Uh, sort of the same thing happens with Windows. Namely, it won't sack the dash, uh, the slash mnt slash c, which is where the c drive is mounted. So if you want to actually nope your Windows box using bash and the rm dash rf, you have to make sure to include the slash mnt slash c or run the bash uh, the bash shell from the admin command line mm. that's the way to do it yeah so so you're telling me there's a way there is a way <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> i don't know i thought that was an interesting thought experiment and of course you know the, the person who wrote this just all right you're like hey this is the command that's put it's like that's not going to work out of the box there's safeguards yeah. in place so yeah under linux you have to include the dash dash don't dash preserve dash mm -hmm. root otherwise you'll still have a fully working operating system you'll just be sacking everything in your home directory that's lovely. it <laughs> oh speaking of lovely let's talk about the lovely people that make this nightmare train possible that's right we're talking about our patreon 75 patreons let's get that up to about 100 kicking in 137 dollars not just for this show but we also do a little thing on a saturday night called uh, linux gamecast yeah i think that's the name of it <laughs> we got a couple of goals coming up um speaking of gaming that's one of the next things we have uh where we're gonna make our co-host jordan uh he's gonna play some serious sam and cry and moan and complain the entire time it's gonna be lovely because actually. he loves that game so much doesn't he, he does <laughs> and um yeah i mean i, I just want to give a shout out to everyone helping us out with that i mean if you're on the fence thinking about it you're like maybe come on over come on over five cents be we one of don't us. ask for much yeah, just five cents. We just get, want to get the number of... Do you see the starving boy in Portugal? <laughs> Only you. <laughs> I'm skinny, but not that skinny. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. Let's get back up to the top then, because um, that's the new XPS 13 developer edition. That's only 10.99. No monies. Um, yep. we, we were having a drawn-out discussion on laptops. Now... I'm going to let Pedro take this story because I was like, well, you could just buy a System 70. Don't buy a System 76 unless System 76 you want to sponsor the show. Buy the hell up. Damn it. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> and uh, only then. Right. But yeah, uh, Dell has released the new XPS 13 developer edition, which comes preloaded with Ubuntu 1404.1. Uh, one, they call it SP1, <laughs> because we're <laughs> dealing with Windows. Never mind. Uh, yeah, the base configuration comes with an Intel Core i5. Uh, what is it? The 6200U. So at least it's a Skylake part. Good on them. It only has 8 gigabytes of RAM, and this is actually a positive. It comes with a 256 gigabyte solid state drive. That is a pretty good idea. But the price for all of these specs is, like Ben already mentioned, it's $10.99. You're paying 1100 bucks for the same, well, maybe not the same, but very close to the same specs as you would get from another, say, $800 to $900 laptop. Now, if I had the money, I would actually buy this one because the infinity screen, as they call it, it's a nearly bezel-less um, 1080p screen on a 13-inch laptop. It looks amazing. I want it in my face, but it's a bit too expensive for that. Yeah, my biggest issue with this is it being a 13-inch laptop because I wouldn't mind a 13-inch. That's way too close to my tablet territory. <laughs> you know, when I was mentioning, you can get a cheaper computer and... You know, yeah. more computer, and Pedro told me, he's like, but they're a lot thicker. And I was like, I don't look at that as a thin laptop. I look at that as a very thick tablet, because t in my life, tablets have just replaced, you know, give me a nice 10-inch yeah. and I'm happy, giggity. Um, so, yeah, not not really in the market for it, and uh, it's a little overpriced. It's like they're trying to throw it's, a yeah, Linux tax on there. Bit, 
too pricey. That's my one gripe with it. But hey, Dell is one of those OEM brands that's actually supporting Linux out of the box. So, yeah. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> okay. So this is just cool. Okay. All right. Yeah. It, it runs Linux and it, it it's just cool. Tell them about it while I track down the spot in the video where I went, all right, I'm making one. <laughs> okay. So this is, uh, I can't remember his name. Wormy? Yeah, I guess that's what he calls himself on the internet. Right here. If that is his right real here. name. Yep. Right here. Uh, he basically hacked a Game Boy and a Game Boy cartridge. Uh, the Game Boy itself is running a Raspberry Pi Zero. And the cartridge, he basically mounted a uh, micro SD to full size SD card converter on the inside of the cartridge and reworked the, in the, the internal connections of the Game Boy in order to recognize that as a, well, as an SD card. And yeah, he just loads it up. It's got tons and tons of games, and the entire operating system is running off of that teeny tiny SD card he just shoved into the cartridge. And the entire thing comes along surprisingly well. It's really, really impressive how it all fits inside. He actually, at uh, one point, he actually pulls open the battery compartment for the uh, for the Game Boy and you can see he has a lithium ion rechargeable battery in there and well all the way back there he's got the Raspberry Pi Zero in there along with some speakers and everything else and he actually reworked the internals of the um, uh, what was it the uh, headphone jack so it would hello what Oh, you're still there. I don't know. The, the hangout just froze for me. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, you actually reworked the headphone jack. So when you plug in your headphones, it will do the whole switching from the speakers to the headphones. So it's really well done. He had a lot. He did it really well. It's yeah, actually I mean, I definitely very, going to back impressive. that project. I mean, it, there's nothing to back, but I mean, they, they gives you yeah. like the breakdown on the imagers and all that. Uh, the only thing I would go against is don't cannibalize a Game Boy case. I mean, it, all right. I mean, if the Game Boy case, if, if it's a dead Game Boy, fine, fair game. I mean, just like, yeah. you know, maybe 3D print one. But, um, you know, Team Blue, they came out with something that's also a little bit uh, filled with controversy this week, Pedro. Is it? Or is it just semantics? Oh, man. Nerd fight <laughs> as it goes to the wrong tab. <laughs> Um, did this came over in our open source? Uh, we actually we need to check and see if open source is available on the Reddit. That'd be fun to. <laughs> um, yeah, a little angry. The statement and uh, Intel said they would open source the Adreno 101 RTOS firmware in March. They released it under proprietary license, and uh, the world's falling apart. The statement announcing the roadmap for the firmware really noted explicitly says it will be open source, but they released a very restrictive license. Um, so technically you can still see the source, you just can't distribute it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. Pretty so much. it's the, uh, NVIDIA Hairworks, uh, Unreal Engine 4, something else that also did it like that way of thinking. Well, I don't know. I mean, it's just like a holy war that I do not get into, you know, and <laughs> you're like, is it open source or is it open sourced or is it source available? Like, then, you know, people will jump back into the, um, what was the bits here? Uh, all right. Uh, as he looks around, yeah, mm -hmm. the source available license. I mean, that's basically what this is. And I'm okay yeah. with that. It's Intel. Intel does a lot of good work. Intel releases a lot of open source stuff, especially with their video stack. So... Yep. The and basically the Mesa stack as it currently stands is built off of the shoulders of Intel and everything that they've contributed to it. So yeah. So they don't want to make the Arduino license free slash libre, whatever you I want mean, to call it. It's not GPL, but do you remember the holy war that went on between GPL two and GPL three? I mean we <laughs> Even the Or the Holy War we covered just earlier about the uh, CDDDL not being compatible with GPL2 plus. Right. <laughs> I don't know. It's just spaghetti. I mean, at least we're living in a world where our argument is, but it's not GPL as opposed to 
Yeah, they released a binary blob. I mean, progress. Yeah. So let's <laughs> think about it like that. Oh, boy. So, yes, it's Horus Technica's reporting that a team of um, highly skilled developers managed to bring down the Mumblehard uh, botnet, which, uh, if you don't know what it is, I don't blame you. I didn't either. The Mumblehard botnet was a was consist, uh, consistent of um, Linux and BSD servers that had been basically infected somehow. That's still up for debate on exactly how they got infected with a Trojan and a backdoor that would allow the attackers to use those machines remotely to do whatever they wanted, basically. Uh, but the guys and gals from, let's see, ESET, yeah, the guys that make the NOT32 antivirus for Windows, if you're one of those people, uh, they actually managed to take down the network and they've uh, created the sinkhole with the every single machine that they could get access to after they cracked it. They made a sinkhole to see which other machines it was connected because the guys behind Mumblehard were actually tracking the list of IPs that they were compiling uh, to see which machines were infected. Whenever they figured out that a machine was infected, they would add the IP to the list. Mm -hmm. And and the, the hackers, as they were, were keeping an eye on that list and updating the servers to, okay, that... IP has been compromised, we're just going to use something else, and they would do it like that, but they've actually managed to crack it all the way down, and they brought down 4,000 infected servers. Yeah, they got rid of the control server, so um, yeah. that's definitely a good thing, but what, what do we need to know, Pedro? Should I immediately take all the thermite and put it on my Linux box and Jimi Hendrix that <laughs> sucker? Should I be scared about my home box? Does this affect me? Uh, No. Not at this time. Like I said, they're not exactly sure how they got infected. Uh, at first, they speculated that maybe they found an exploit with some CMS or another, like WordPress, Joomla, Drupal, whatever, or one of the plugins for one of those CMSs. But that wasn't the case. After they cracked it open and saw exactly what had happened, it, that was not it. So at this point, we don't really know how they got infected. Chances are probably outdated software. Right. Um, listen, admins, you know, don't don't use special copies of a uh, GOG games, okay? No. Oh. <laughs> so I, why why is this even in the notes? Come on. Uh, this is well. This comes as sort of a segue from the previous story. Outdated software. Yes. So the developer of X Screensaver has decided to basically surreptitiously introduce a little error message onto the old version that is currently being used in Debian stale, uh, Stable. And you he... can call it Debian Stale. No one will... There's <laughs> <laughs> probably a Debian fanboy out there somewhere that's going to be really angry at me for calling it that, but whatever. Uh, so he was getting tired of people actually going to the X screensaver bug reporting and mm. reporting bugs with the old version. Like, uh, you give some examples. There will be links in the show notes, so don't you worry about that. But he was really getting tired of it and said that, okay, all of these issues that people are reporting, they've already been fixed. So either Debian updates X screensaver or they stop shipping it altogether. Mm. Yeah. Man, um, X screensaver. That, that is like the third thing I disable on any time I. <laughs> uh, Shatrel, uh, leave us a message if you still run, um, you know, on the Patreons or in the YouTube comments. Do you still run a screensaver or you just let them time out like a sane person? Because. Yeah, just let the screen shut down. That's the easiest way to do it. Well, yeah, I mean, I try to conserve, you know, not, not, not that I'm trying to hug rainbows or anything, but I was like trying to conserve power. You know, my power bill's like nothing with just me here right now. But mm. these things, you know, 28 inch, a 27 inch, and whatever inch this thing is up here running all the time. So, yeah, I was just curious about that. But that's good. I mean, um, it's Debian stale, so. 
I would. <laughs> it is to be expected. It's like throwing a hissy fit regarding Debian still using old packages is like complaining that the sky is blue. That said, users filing bugs against an outdated bit of software, that's pretty stupid too. Right. I mean, yeah, you know, problem in chair, not in the computer on that one. But I think that's going to wrap it up for this week. We will return next week. Um, some people ask, when does the show arrive? And I was like, like a wizard. <laughs> Magic. <laughs> but before we uh, kick uh, kick it off the next week, we do have some teeny tiny bits of feedback. Oh, yeah, 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 feedback. Yeah, yeah. feedback. Feedback. To feedback. acknowledge. Oh, yes. right. Feedback. <laughs> Random Askey is like, not that you guys need a reason to be mad about Vivaldi, but I'm kind of bummed out that it's uh, officially out and it still doesn't have the feature that makes or break a browser for me. Part of this reason I still use Firefox is the ability to basically whitelist certain domains to allow cookies so that you have a choice between metaphorically spreading your... Well, come on now, spreading your legs <laughs> to the next day, and allowing sites you can actually trust to function properly with a handful of cookies. Fair point, but... You also got to remember, um, like, the first version of Chrome that came out and everyone who, you know, were la latched on to Firefox and, like, it doesn't have any plugins. Now, you know, there's parody with the plugins. And they're like, um, it's not open source. And I'm like, use Chromium. Um, um, you know, they, they start scrambling. <laughs> just, just be like, hey, man, I like Firefox. I, then we're cool. Yeah. You know? Hey, I like Firefox, too. It's just uh, some of the stuff I actually use on a regular basis when it comes to browsing are not available in Firefox. And they, uh, until not too long ago, they actually had issues showing YouTube videos at more than 720p. Well, that's true. So, I mean, but you can't really hate on something when in one point not really. So, I mean... Yeah. That's when you yeah, need yeah, to yeah. get in there in the discussion form and be like, hey, I need feature X. Yeah. And I'll put and, your uh, browser again, on my wish list. And... Yeah, and Vivaldi is basically running off of the Chromium engine, so yeah. chances are yeah. you can get those uh, CRXs loaded up into Vivaldi if you really want to try that browser, because I honestly don't see why, but okay, sure. <laughs> uh, the new Matthew... Not Matthew Commandant, the other one. Uh, other Matthew. He had some, yeah, he had some comments about uh, Strider's choice of grilled cheese sandwich. Okay. He was like, oh, come on, Matthew, you had to make it a croque monsieur, or at least some real cheeses. He's talking about, like, some stinky French cheese, man. That's what he wants. Uh, I honestly don't know the croque monsieur. I am in Europe, but I've never had that one. Uh, I know Camembert is pretty stinky, and it's pretty good. I like it, but never heard of Crack Monsieur. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you would like to get in touch with us uh, right now, pr double pinky swear, um, we're working on Vin time, as Empty likes to call it. Um, <laughs> we're going to have the web zone up at the end of this. Hopefully, we'll do some testing on it in the next week, but fully launched. But for the interim, the easiest way to leave us some feedback and... You know, if it's other than, you know, Vin's awesome. And I'm like, I, that's great. I know that. Or Pedro sucks. And I was like, we all know that, too. Um, but <laughs> if you got some questions, comments, thoughts, ideas, hints, allegations, or things better left unsaid, just throw in the YouTube comments or in the Patreon comments. And we will definitely get back to you. Now, I'm super serial. That's going to bring us to the end of this week's show. Because I've been Vin yeah. Stone. <laughs> and I am Bethlehem with Hood. And this is actually the end. I I got nothing. I'm sorry. <laughs>